Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So since 5th edition has been around, Hunter's Mark has been considered a must-have for Ranger. Or at least, it used to be. More recently, it's been called out as a trap pick. So, which is it? Today I'm going to break down some math. First off, why does anyone consider Hunter's Mark a must-have pick for Rangers? Well, if you're playing a Ranger, you're probably wanting to attack with a weapon. Hunter's Mark is a first level ranger spell and it allows you to increase your weapon damage by a d6. Since it's a bonus action to cast, you can cast it and still take the attack action on your turn, and with a 90 foot range it can work pretty well combined with either melee or range attacks. With a 1 hour duration, it's a spell that stretches the limited ranger spell slots as it can likely last multiple, even several combats. The spell also provides the character advantage on perception and survival checks to find the target, and in my experience, I, I don't remember if that's ever come up, um, maybe once or twice, but for the most part, that part of the spell is ignored. Whenever a target drops to zero hit points, you can change your target, but that requires your bonus action. So if you're playing a ranger and you want to do as much damage as possible, this seems like an obvious pick. So why does anyone call it a trap? Well, there's two reasons. The first is that Hunter's Mark uses your Ranger's Concentration. That means if you use Hunter's Mark, you aren't using any other Concentration spell. And the Ranger list has some nice options. Not at level 1, but when we get into higher level spells, definitely some good options. The second is that even if you aren't concentrating on another spell, Hunter's Mark actually uses your bonus action a lot. Not just the initial casting, but you're changing targets regularly. The theory is that if the ranger was to take Crossbow Expert to get an additional attack as a bonus action using a hand crossbow, it's going to be a way more effective way to deliver damage with your bonus action than using Hunter's Mark is. Spells are versatile, and I agree there may be other ranger spells you would rather concentrate on, but what I want to talk about today is the second theory, that Crossbow Expert plus a hand crossbow is superior to Longbow plus Hunter's Mark. We shouldn't assume something is true just because we're told it's true. So I'm going to make some comparisons up to level 5. I mean nobody needs to convince me that Hunter's Mark isn't the ranger's best play after higher level spells are an option. To make things as easy as possible, I'm going to assume straight class ranger. And probably going into Gloomstalker, I mean that's generally considered the most powerful ranger option. For a crossbow expert build, you would want to go with a racial option that gives you a free feat. And that means custom lineage or variant human. They pick up Crossbow Expert at level 1, and then at level 4, they take Sharpshooter. If we make a Longbow build, we could follow a similar progression, but we can skip Crossbow Expert. So we would take Sharpshooter at level 1, and then Dexterity plus 2 at level 4. The Longbow build doesn't use bonus actions for attacks, so they can pretty much use Hunter's Mark whenever they want. They can even recast it if they lose concentration. So for the purpose of this comparison, we'll just assume the extra D6 is applied to every attack. The Crossbow Expert build doesn't need their bonus action for anything else, so we'll assume they get their bonus action attack every round. Let's start at level 1. At this point, neither Ranger can even get Hunter's Mark, since Rangers don't get spells until level 2. So our Crossbow Expert has a plus 5 bonus to hit, damage is a d6 plus 3, or 6.5 on average, and with a 60% chance to hit, that's 3.9 damage per attack, plus another 0.18 from potential critical hits, and that gives us a total of 4.08 per attack. With two attacks, that's 8.16 damage on their turn. We should also consider Favored Foe. Favored Foe is a really limited resource. You can use it a proficiency bonus number of times per long rest. So at level 1, we could apply it to two targets during our adventuring day. So most of the time, we wouldn't be applying it. But let's see what it adds up to if we do. At level 1, it adds a d4, which is 2.5 average damage, once on our turn if we hit. Crossbow Expert helps us out here because we have a better chance to hit at least once if we attack twice. So that means instead of a 60% chance to apply the extra damage, we have 84% and 5% from criticals, and Favored Foe adds 2.23 damage per turn. So when Favored Foe is used, the Crossbow Expert's average damage shoots up to 10.39. I have to assume most of the time we won't have the bonus from Favored Foe though, but that's how much it adds when it is used. One nice thing here is it's added after the first hit, so there's no reason to waste it if we miss. Our Longbow Ranger also has a plus 5 bonus to hit. 
Damage is a D8 plus 3, or 7.5 on average, with a 60% chance to hit, that's 4.5 per attack, plus 0.23 from potential criticals, and that's 4.73 damage on their turn. Apply Favored Foe for 1.63 more, and they're up to 6.36 damage. If our Longbow Ranger uses Sharpshooter for a minus 5 to hit and plus 10 damage, their chance to hit drops to 35%, but the attack does 17.5 damage on a hit. That works out to 5.25 plus 0.23 from criticals, or 5.48 damage. Since their chance to hit is lowered, so is their favored foe damage, and it reduces to 0.88, giving us a total of 6.36. Hey, that's the same damage. There you go, crossbow expert is better. Well, kind of, because there are some variables this comparison doesn't consider, but I think it's safe to say, big picture, at level 1, I'd say a ranger is better off with crossbow expert than with sharpshooter. It does give us a data point before we bring Hunter's Mark into the mix at level 2, and Gloomstalker into the mix at level 3. So let's jump to level 3 and take both those things into account. Both rangers are now Gloomstalkers, and both will take archery as a combat style, jumping in their bonus to hit to plus 7. Let's do a similar comparison. Round 1 will be different from subsequent rounds. The Gloomstalker has this really nice feature. One extra attack on the first round, and a d8 extra damage if it hits. So the base chance to hit is now 70%. We'll also assume now the Longbow Ranger will cast Hunter's Mark and get that bonus d6 damage. So starting with the Crossbow Expert Ranger, we have 70% chance to hit with 6.5 average damage. That's 4.55 average damage per attack, plus another 0.18 potential critical damage. That is 4.73 per attack. On round 1, they will have 3 attacks, their regular attack, their dread ambusher attack, as well as their crossbow expert attack. So that is a total of 14.19 damage, then we add the d8 from dread ambusher, which will be applied 70% of the time, plus 5% chance it's a critical, and that's another 3.38 more, so we're up to 17.57 round 1 damage. If we want to add favored foe, we need to only hit once with those 3 attacks to apply it, that's a 98% chance. Add 5% for criticals, so 2.5 average damage. So if we use Favorite Foe, our round 1 damage increases to 20.15. On round 2 and following rounds, damage drops to 9.46 per round, or 11.86 with Favorite Foe. Now our Hunter's Mark Ranger. And we'll use Sharpshooter here, because the minus 5 to hit plus 10 damage is definitely worth it at this point. We're going to add a d6 from Hunter's Mark, but we won't be using Favored Foe because it requires concentration, and we're going to be concentrating already. So our chance to hit drops to 45%, but our average damage on a hit increases to 21. That's 9.45 damage per hit, plus 0.4 from criticals, or 9.85. On round 1, that's 19.7, plus 2.25 from Dread Ambusher, and we're up to 21.95, and on round 2, this drops to 9.85. So we have 20.15 versus 21.95, and it's roughly equal on round 1, assuming Crossbow Expert uses Favored Foe. Otherwise, the Longbow actually is doing quite a bit more. On round 2 and following rounds, the damage is quite similar. The Longbow user is doing a bit more damage, but if the Crossbow Expert continues to use Favored Foe, they do pull out ahead. Either way though, these numbers are pretty close. But again, this is a simplistic breakdown, but I want to look at level 5, and then we'll look at the nuance. So at level 5, they both have extra attack, they both have sharpshooter, the favorite foe die increases to a d6. Let's look at the numbers. Our crossbow expert build will use the minus 5 plus 10 sharpshooter option, because they didn't increase their dexterity bonus at level 4, they drop 5% in chance to hit, so it's base 55%, plus 10% from archery, minus 25% from sharpshooter, or a 30% chance to hit. Base damage is a d6 plus 3 plus 10, or 16.5 on average per hit. With a 30% chance to hit, that's 4.95 damage per attack, plus 0.18 from potential criticals, or 5.13 per attack. Favored foe is adding a d6, 2d6 on a critical, with a 76% chance of being applied on their turn, or 2.84 damage once. After round 1, this drops to 2.46. Dread Ambusher is adding another 1.58 on round 1. So round 1 damage, 5.13 times 4, plus 2.84, plus 1.58, is 24.94. On round 2, 
This drops to 5.13 times 3 plus 2.46 or 17.85. Now let's look at Hunter's Mark. So they will also use the minus 5 plus 10. They increase their dexterity, so they maintain the 60% chance to hit, plus 10 from archery, minus 25% from sharpshooter, and they're at 35% chance to hit. Their average damage went up with their dexterity to a d8 plus d6 plus 4 plus 10, or 22 damage per hit. That's 7.7 .7 per attack, plus 0.4 from criticals for 8.1. Dread Ambusher adds 1.8 on round 1. So our round 1 damage is 8.1 times 3 plus 1.8, is 26.1. Round 2 damage is 8.1 times 2, or 16.2. Notice these numbers suddenly became pretty close. Bit more for Hunter's Mark on round 1, bit more from Crossbow Expert on round 2. But let's not forget that Gloomstalkers can't be seen with dark vision, so they will often have advantage on their attacks. Let's look at how that changes the comparison, so we'll give them both advantage. So our Crossbow Expert Ranger now has a 49% chance to hit, that's 8.09 average plus 0.35 critical damage, or 8.44 per attack. Favored foe will be 3.47 on round 1, and 3.22 on rounds thereafter. Dread Ambusher adds 2.66 on round 1. So our round 1 damage is 8.44 times 4, plus 3.47, plus 2.66. That's 39.89. That's pretty good damage. Round 2 damage, 8.44 times 3, plus 3.22 is 28.54. Still not bad. And then our Hunter's Mark Ranger. Now they have a 58% chance to hit. That's 12.76 per attack, plus 0.8 critical damage, or 13.56. Dread Ambusher adds 3.06. So on round 1, the damage is 13.56 times 3, plus 3.06, 43.74. On round 2, 13.56 times 2, 27.12. So I'm going to talk about some of the nuance behind these numbers, but first, let's just look at the numbers we have. So I'm going to look just at the favored foe numbers for now, but what we see is at level 1, the hand crossbow comes way out ahead. 10.39 versus 6.36. That's not even close. Of course, Hunter's Mark isn't a thing yet. Then once we add Hunter's Mark at level 3, we are seeing on round 1, the longbow user actually does a little bit more damage and then on round two, it does less damage. And the difference between that round one damage and the difference between the round two damage is very similar, but switched, which means as long as we're having more than two rounds in a combat, I would imagine the hand crossbow user is going to come out ahead, but not a lot ahead. These numbers now are getting pretty close. Then at level five, again, we see the longbow user does more damage on round one. And we still see that the hand crossbow user does more damage on round two and subsequent rounds. But those gaps are pretty small. So now I would say, pretty much regardless of the length of the combat, the total damage output of either of these builds looks like it should be very, very similar. And if we add advantage, we have 43.74 versus 39.89 on round one. That seems like a big difference. But round two, then we're doing more damage with the hand crossbow. And again, once we add enough rounds, it'll catch up. So again, the numbers look really similar. So just before we get into the details, what I see here is that at level one, there's absolutely a big difference. After level one, not much of a difference. The numbers are not the same, but they're very, very close. But those are just numbers. Let's talk a little bit about the nuance that these calculations didn't provide us. First off, if avoiding Hunter's Mark is about saving concentration for other spells, then Favored Foes should definitely not be applied in the comparison. So now our numbers look more like this. That doesn't mean you shouldn't concentrate on a different spell, but let's be honest about the damage you sacrifice. If we're using Favored Foe, however, at level 5, we're talking about 3 total targets. At levels 1 through 4, it's 2 total targets. So even if we are willing to use our concentration, we shouldn't expect to get favored foe damage all the time. In fact, I would kind of be surprised if you get it even half the time. On the other hand, Hunter's Mark concentration can go down. And just because we recast does not mean it's an automatic. We have limited spell slots. And if you lose concentration enough, then you won't be able to raise Hunter's Mark. In that case, our numbers look more like this. 
Also, if we spend a spell slot on Hunter's Mark, that's one less spell slot for Goodberry or another first level Ranger spell. We should also talk about range. If 120 feet is always enough range, then at level 4 and 5, there really isn't much difference between the range of a hand crossbow and a longbow. I mean, there is, because a longbow has 600 feet of range, but it's not a difference that's going to affect gameplay. It's just a number on your character sheet. However, I don't know your table experience. If you find it's not uncommon to have enemies at ranges over 120 feet, then the longbow provides a dramatic advantage over a hand crossbow. But do keep in mind you won't be applying Hunter's Mark damage because Hunter's Mark has a range of 90 feet. But the longbow will simply out-damage the hand crossbow as soon as the hand crossbow is out of range. And at levels 1 to 3, the difference in range actually will be dramatic at most tables. Disadvantage over 30 foot range will be a factor. And that's versus 600 feet of range if you have a longbow and sharpshooter. Then we must consider cover. At levels 1 through 3, the longbow ranger will ignore armor class modifiers for cover, and a crossbow expert won't. That could be a plus 2 or plus 4 armor class, and it, that's going to have a significant impact on the damage numbers. On the other hand, we should consider disadvantage for firing and melee. Crossbow expert rangers won't have it. Longbow rangers will. That means the longbow ranger concentrating on Hunter's Mark will probably have to provoke the occasional opportunity attack to get out of melee range, if it's even possible for them to do so. Then we have to consider the value of the plus one dexterity modifier beyond just how it impacts to hit and damage. Levels four and five, the longbow ranger is going to have a better initiative modifier, a better dexterity saving throw, and potentially, depending on the armor used, a better armor class. So where does that leave us? Well, first off, I think we can safely say there are some advantages to using crossbow expert and a hand crossbow over Hunter's Mark and a longbow between levels 1 and 5. There is a significant advantage in potential damage at level 1, and even at level 3, it's still more damage in a prolonged fight. It also saves spell slots for other purposes and reduces the impact of getting stuck in melee range. If you want to concentrate on something else, you can though the drop to damage is not insignificant because you can't use Favored Foe. On the other hand, Hunter's Mark plus a Longbow does have some other advantages. Dramatically greater range, better round one burst damage, the ability to ignore cover earlier, greater lasting potential versus Favored Foe, and the ability to add damage to multiple attacks on a turn. Probably the biggest advantage is it saves you a feat, and ability score increases are precious. This is something that is often missed in the comparisons. You can't just compare Hunter's Mark to Crossbow Expert because Crossbow Expert is a feat and feats are probably more valuable than first level spell slots. What I really want to highlight is the weapon damage potential of either route isn't dramatically different. It wasn't equal, but the numbers weren't heavily weighted one way or the other. Except level 1. Crossbow Expert is likely the better option at level 1. So, my conclusion is that utilizing a longbow in Hunter's Mark is not a must-have for rangers. Crossbow Expert and a hand crossbow is a perfectly valid alternative. Likewise, I don't think using Hunter's Mark in a longbow is a trap. You're making some obvious sacrifices, but you are getting real advantages. But if we do look at spells of higher than first level, there are some that are well worth your concentration over Hunter's Mark. So I do think a 20th level ranger who's concentrating on Hunter's Mark is missing out. But at level 2, at level 4, or for a specialized non-straight ranger who compiles a ton of attacks on a turn, Hunter's Mark can be a perfectly reasonable spell to cast. So Hunter's Mark, not a must-have, but also not a trap. There are some advantages, and there are some disadvantages. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.